My name is Alexander Ivanain and I'm a co-worker of Professor uh, from the University of Paderborn at the Institute of Applied Mechanics. And uh, I have to say my presentation is not dealing with uh, thermal mechanical fatigue, so, uh, but everybody is invited to stay here and uh, yeah, listen to the presentation. Um, Good afternoon, dear ladies and gentlemen. It's a pleasure for me to present here our investigations uh, on the effect of varying loading directions and loading levels on the crack growth at 2D and 3D maximum loadings. So, um, I would like to start my presentation with challenges in fracture mechanical estimation, and after that, I want you to explain um, the performed test series on the fatigue crack growth at uh, under variable cyclic loading amplitude for which this CDSR specimen and the loading device was used to. And the main point in my presentation will be the experimental results on crack growth due to changing loadings and especially changing loading directions and loading levels. And at the end of my presentation I will give a summary of the results. So, the fracture mechanical estimation of components containing cracks generally requires information about the component load, of course, and the geometry of the crack and the component, the material properties, and uh, the fracture mechanical characteristics. So the component load here was the aspect which I studied here within this research, because usually the component load changes during the service life of a structure. So consequently, the real component lot is a result of different, different changing loadings, which can lead to retardation or acceleration effects in fatigue crack growth. So my investigations are especially focused on the effect of varying loading directions, for example, from, from a mode 1 loading to a mode 3 loading, and uh, varying loading levels by interspersing lock loads on the crack growth. So now I would like to explain you the performed test series. In the first test series, different uh, in the first test series, uh, the loading direction was changed in after a crack growth of 3.5 millimeters under mode one loading condition into in plane mixed mode as well as spatial mixed mode situations. The R ratio here was constant at 0.1. So starting from pure mode 1 loading at the crack and changing of the loading direction into an in-plane mixed mode situation leads to a decreasing delta K1 and an immediately increasing delta K2. Moreover, uh, such a changing loading direction has an influence on the crack growth rate too, as Sander and Richard already showed. In the second test series, different mixed mode uh, block lots were interspersed in a mode 1 base lot, in a mode 2 base lot, and in a mode 3 base lot to investigate the impacts on fatigue crack growth. The R ratio here was also kept constant at 0.1. Furthermore, the block loading ratio RB block and the maximum comparative stress intensity factor K block during the block load are defined by these both equations here. On the right figure, a typical AN curve of such a block loading test is shown with uh, some characteristic variables which describe the retardation effect of such a low, high, low sequence. Uh, to perform these experiments, the so-called CDSR specimen and the loading device was used and CDSR stands here for compact tension shear rotation. The specimen geometry with the yeah, characteristic dimensions is shown here on, this, oh, is shown here on, this, uh, on the left side of the slide. The testing material was a uh, heat treated aluminium alloy 7075. The appropriate loading device consists of two sickles and so-called turrets where the specimen is fixed in. This concept enables crack growth investigating under pure mode 1 loading, pure mode 2 loading, pure mode 3 loading, as well as almost every combination of these three loading modes. 
only by changing the loading angles alpha and beta and uni uh, using only a uniaxial testing machine. So now I, want to, I would like to show you the results of the first test series. The changing the loading direction from with one loading into in-play mixed mode situations. So if the loading direction is not changed, then the crack grows like the blue curve here shows. By changing the loading direction from a mode 1 loading into pure mode 2 loading, the crack retards significantly, as you can see on this violet curve here. Other in plane mixed mode situations lie in between these both curves. The crack growth retardation here is caused by the new crack growth direction, whereby the crack here kinks out of its previous orientation and has to initiate again in this new direction. The measured crack kinking angles coincides very good with the hypothesis by Richard. The results of um, changing loading directions from mode 1 loading into mixed mode 1 plus 3 loading combinations shows quite similar retardation effects on the crack growth. Significant retardation effects were here obtained for K3 to K1 ratios between 1 and infinite. The crack growth retardation effects here are also caused by the new crack growth direction whereby the crack here twists out of its orientation, of its previous orientation and in the same time separates into multiple daughter cracks, so called facets which also has an influence on the crack growth rate. <clears throat> the measured crack, thinking, uh, crack twisting angles here uh, coincides also very good with the hypothesis by Richard. Well, let's uh, have a detailed look on this fractured surface here. This row of fractured surfaces show, show the facet formation depending on the mod 3 part on the total stress intensity factor K1 plus K3. It is obvious that facet develops at a specific mod 3 part on the total stress intensity factor of 0.37. Within this experiment, no facet developed below this ratio. At low delta K, at low K3 parts, as you can see here, uh, the crack changes its growth direction continuously and smoothly without any facet initiation. Furthermore, the crack front is still coherent. So for characterizing the crack growth initiation behavior under mixed mode 1 plus 3 loading combination, it is now necessary to quantify the facets, but um, this will be the next step of our investigations. So far the results of the first test series. Now I would like to come to the results of the second test series, the effect of varying loading levels. This graph here shows an interspersed mode 1 block lot in a mode 1 base lot. And as you can see, the crack rests after mode 1 block lot. Furthermore, an interspersed mode 3 block lot in a mode 1 base lot does not affect the crack growth. Other, different, uh, other uh, mixed mode 1 plus 3 block lots lie between these both curves. Similar influences have interspersed in plane mixed mode block lots in a mode 2 base lot. Here, only a pure mode 2 block lot leads to significant crack growth retardation in mode 2 base lot. In comparison to that, interspersed mixed mode 1 plus 3 blocks in a mode 3 base lot always affect a crack in the mode 3 base lot. This is also shown by the determined delay cycles NDI, which you can see here on this graph. In the right hand side of the slide here, some typical fractured surfaces are shown which exhibit expected characteristics. For example, you can see a typical step here on the fractured surface under mode 2 base lot, which occurred due to a pure mode 1 block lot. The fractured surface resulting from uh, interspersed mode 1 mode 3 block lots in a mode 3 base lot reveal several facets and are relatively jacked. So, let me summarize the results of this experiment now. 
The varying loading directions show that a crack initiation in a new direction, as well as the facet formation, especially at mixed mode 1 plus 3 loading combinations, are responsible for the crack growth retardations. Furthermore, the hypothesis by Richard shows quite good congruence uh, between, between or with the measure of crack kinking and the crack twisting angles. Significant advantages in durability are obtained by changing the loading directions in the regions of K2, 2K1, and K3, 2K1 between 1 and infinite. The varying loading levels show that the mode 3 block lot does not affect the crack in the mode 1 base lot. Not that they chose loading parameters here. Furthermore, only a mode 2 block lot leads to crack growth retardation in the mode 2 base lot. The influence of a mode 1 block lot on crack growth in a mode 3 base lot ever exists. The greatest advantages here in durability were achieved by identical loading modes of the block lot and the base lot. Thank you very much for your attention.